What happens in the A and E department is a consequence of a whole system, a whole healthcare system. Uh, we've got to work. I've got to work with partners and the public to understand who's coming to the A and E department and why. Uh, are people coming to the A and E department when there's alternatives available for them, but they're choosing still to come to the A and E department? And, and why is that? And how can we better educate people to what the alternatives are? A and E departments are for accidents and emergencies. Not all the patients in the A and E department are accidents or emergencies. And some of those emergencies could have been avoided. They're avoidable emergencies. So people's strokes, people's heart attacks, people's chronic conditions could be managed better to stop them coming into the hospital when they're acutely ill. I want to work with the, uh, the polyclinics, the private clinics and the Ministry of Health and Wellness as to how do we avoid people coming to the A&E department in the first place and how do we keep people fit and well uh, not requiring the A&E department. If somebody does need the A&E department then I need to make sure that we're getting the flows through that department as efficiently as possible. I've got the right doctors and the right nurses in the right places at the right times to manage the flows and when that flow changes and we have what we call a spike of attendances we have systems in place that will manage a spike. If there's, a, if there's a, a, a number of people that have turned up which is higher than what we would normally expect, how we respond to that is for us to put in the right systems to do that. A&E uh, then department is dependent on what's happening with pathology, radiology and other departments within the hospital and I've asked already for a review of the escalation plan that clarifies what happens, what everybody does when the A&E department is getting busy. It's not just about the A&E department. Um, I feel sorry sometimes for the A&E department because the book seems to stop with them and they're just what's the bottleneck in this whole system. Um, once we've got the uh, escalation plans in place so how everybody can support A&E, we also need to work and I've started this piece of work on the wards. If the A&E department's full because it can't move patients from the A&E department onto a ward upstairs into the, into the medical beds, we need to make sure that the wards are functioning as efficiently and as effectively as possible. So we've already started some work with the medical leads and how we can maybe manage the medical beds slightly differently uh, to improve flow through those inpatient beds. At the end of the stay in the hospital, we need to discharge patients. And I need to work with the parties again externally to work out where will we discharge patients to? Where will the LD for care patients go to? Uh, and and what, what are the different options? So it's a whole system approach. I need to manage internally the A&E flow and the hospital flow, diagnostics and beds and flow through those beds. I need to work externally with other parties to how can we stop people coming in the first place? How can we keep people well so they don't need to come? What are the alternatives for them? What could the pharmacy do? What could the clinics do? So what's the alternatives from the A&E department? And then how do we manage patients post-discharge after they've been discharged from the hospital? Where can they go? What are the options? What's the different ways of managing them uh, afterwards?